Okay, everybody, this is Mooney Dashcam. Today, we are going to the site of a murder that was assumed to be a suicide back in the day. But as more evidence comes out, it's looking like it was more of a murder. So this is the result of my last video about John Gotti. The murder, the stabbing of Danny Silva at the Silver Fox Bar. Uh, March 12th, 1983. I will link that video in the description and on the screen. Uh, so yeah, March 12th, 1983 was the murder of Danny Silva by John Gotti Jr. and his crew by stabbing. The only person arrested for that crime was John Gotti Jr.'s bodyguard, Mark Caputo. He, um, he only ended up being arrested for like six weeks and then was thrown out because he wasn't the one who did it. Now the reason why people think that the detectives and the police didn't go after John Gotti Jr. was because John Gotti Sr. paid off a detective, John Daly, reportedly $25,000. Now this is back in the 80s, so that's a lot more money now than it was then, of course. But um, John Daly denied that when he was asked about it. Alright, so let's get into this. So, the night Danny Silva was killed, a man by the name of, well really at the time it was a kid, he was 21 years old or maybe even a little younger, maybe 20, John Sinamo was friends with John Daly and was in the bar, not John Daly, I'm sorry, Danny Silva, and was in the bar at the time he was stabbed by John Gotti. So, Danny Silva ends up getting brought to the hospital and John Sinamo follows him and he's yelling all around the hospital we all know who did it Johnny Boy Gotti did it Johnny Boy Gotti did it we all know which they probably did all know to be honest but he goes around and yells that and of course that gets back uh, at the time um, this is Detective Jane McKinley's testimony so at the time the detective is there and word gets out and of course gets back to John Gotti Jr.'s crew and John Gotti's crew, the Gambino crime family. So McKinley ends up asking John Sinamo to come down to the 106 precinct and give a statement, which he did. Can you hear the train going over? Which he did go and give a statement. But McKinley said that the statement that he gave was nothing for John Gotti to be so mad about, right? Now, to me, it seems like a bunch of paid off police and detectives when we go through this story, but you guys let me know what you think, all right? So, John Gotti Jr. was never approached about the killing of Danny Silva which of course would piss off someone like Johnny Sinamo, John Sinamo, that it was his friend. You want the person that killed your friend to be, uh, to face justice, so to say. So we're going here. Now the cross street that we're going to where this took place is 180th Street and Linden Boulevard in St. Albans. All right. May 27th at 7.53 a.m. Oh, man, that guy's in a rush. At 7.53 a.m., the police get a call that there's a body hanging behind a laundromat from a tree. So they show up, right? One of the detectives on the scene was... Now, this is 14 months later, okay? One of the detectives on the scene was Joseph Stilitano. Now he shows up, he was kind of a rookie cop at the time, and he thinks that it's possibly a homicide because what happened was John Sinamo had a sweater around his neck, loosely around his neck, hanging from a tree, and his knees were almost touching the ground. So you think that if you were hanging yourself, you'd have to be from a higher surface, I'm not sure. Instinctually, you probably put your feet out. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure on that. But the cop that showed up said, this is like a little bit fishy. And then a detective that was there said, no, 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 this is a suicide. 
and the guy, Joseph Stilitano, was like, I don't know, I think we should wait for like a medical examiner to come. So he marked it down as an apparent suicide, kind of being forced by the detective that was there. Now tell me that's not a little bit fishy. One of the cops getting forced by another cop, kind of against his own gut judgment. A little bit weird. So now, that's kind of all the information that was out there for a little bit, a little while. And then afterwards, Johnny A. Light comes out and says that right after the kid John Sinamo was killed at 22 years old, which is terrible. I mean, terrible for anyone to be killed at any age, but that's very young to be killed. All right. Oh, we're not going to make this a light. So yeah, Johnny A. Light comes out and says that John Gotti Jr. came and visited him in the hospital because Johnny A. Light, I believe, got into an altercation with someone and was in the hospital for a little while. And uh, John Gotti Jr., reportedly, from Johnny A. Light's words, John Gotti Jr. was joking around, making a hanging motion, saying, oh, I think we could see where he's, where he's hung from here, points out the window of the hospital, joking around about it. The story goes is that John Gotti Sr. sent John Corniglia, uh, Wilfred Willie Boy Johnson, and Angelo Ruggiero to go and kill John Sinamo. Sinamo. Apparently, they made him hang himself. There's a quote saying, okay, now jump. They told him to jump from the tree and hang himself. This is all from Johnny A. Light. Now, to lean more into the suicide possibility, his girlfriend did just break up with him, and this is the laundromat right here. Well, of course the train's going over. But this is the laundromat, and this is the kind of back area that he would be hung. I'm gonna hop out of the truck here for a minute. So this is the laundromat. And I assume that this is the back area that he was actually hung. You can imagine three dudes, three killers forcing you to jump and hang yourself. Pretty sick thing to do. All these guys were kind of sick guys, but we knew that already. So yeah, something to support the claims of suicide. Uh, uh, reportedly, John Sinamo's um, Girlfriend just broke up with him. There's the truck. And he just got fired from his job. So I, I don't know, maybe it's possible. Even the medical examiner said it was a suicide because there was no sign of a struggle. But would there be a struggle if three guys just told you what to do and didn't really rough you up? I don't know. All right, back in the truck. Yeah, even the autopsy was ruled a suicide, so. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm honestly torn. I, I think probably it was a homicide, but I don't know. I really don't know. I'm, I wasn't there, so I really can't tell you. Johnny A. Light did confess to a lot of stuff, so maybe what he's saying is true, that uh, the three guys were sent there. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to tell you about this particular murder. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one.